Today I'm going to take the opportunity to answer a few questions you've been asking on my videos, as well as give you an update on my little Dutch Shepherd Malinois puppy that I'll be getting soon. A lot of you guys are asking, well you're ratting, why aren't you using a terrier? Terriers are breeding for bred for ratting. They only have an advantage in very, very specific situations that I don't personally run into very often. Um, if we were ratting in a bunch of junk piles, then I could see their advantage um, because they're in tight spaces and trying to squeeze in and grab rats. But I'm almost never in that situation and when I am, I always have a mink to catch the rat anyway. So who cares? I don't need a, a dog to squeeze into the tight spots. The mink is doing that for me. So maybe that's another reason why I don't find them as useful is because of my mink. I'm not really sure. All I know is that in my circumstance, a terrier has very limited benefits and a lot of disadvantages. When I lose a rat, the vast majority of the time, it's because my dog's not quite fast enough. Um, the terrier has that problem far more often than our lurchers do, of course, because our lurchers being part greyhound are quite fast. Um, now they're not as quick right off the line, so if the rat pops out right in front of the dog, at that moment, the terrier has the advantage, but a few seconds later, it's all disadvantage. If the terrier hasn't caught it in that first couple seconds, it's all disadvantage because now speed comes into play and a dog with longer legs and is faster has a big advantage over terriers. Another reason I'm not that interested in having a terrier is because we do a lot of hunting along waterways. Terriers have a huge disadvantage in the water because even little puddles they have to swim in. They have short, short little legs and so you could be walking across a teeny little creek with barely any water and the terrier's swimming which gives them a big disadvantage compared to our long-legged dogs that could easily wade where the terrier must swim. Another disadvantage is when you get in deep mud. Even our long-legged onsa would get bogged down sometimes in the mud and couldn't run. A little terrier, that's going to happen far sooner than it would with a big long-legged dog. So that's why I'm not huge on having a terrier. But having said all that, the terrier does have some specific advantages over a big dog. Sorry, fussing baby. Um, so... Terriers do have an advantage in a very specific situation, which I don't run into very often. Um, I'd love to add a terrier to the mix because it would be really nice for the, for the few situations that we come across where the terrier would have the, the advantage to have that terrier there for those specific points of, of time. And then the long-legged dogs uh, like our lurchers for the rest of the time. So anyway, we'll see. I might get a terrier down the road. Um, I'd love to have one. I think they're neat little dogs. They're just... Um, they're just not as useful as the big fast dogs for me and what I do. A lot of people have been asking why we have leashes on when we're doing the ratting. Well, there's two reasons for it. The number one reason is the safety of the dogs. When we're out there uh, moving concrete with heavy machinery, it's very dangerous for the dogs. They could easily stick their head in quickly and get it smashed because they saw a rat and so they dive in and get smashed. If you had a very obedient dog, you know, it's, it's, totally, it's totally fine to have them off leash. But even with the most obedient of dog like Onsa, if you watch some of my old videos, during certain points, I physically hold her back to keep her away from the tractor and the, and the heavy cement that's being moved and then release her when it's safe. So even with a very obedient dog, there'll be times when we restrain them. I just don't necessarily let them drag a leash. So another thing that we do it for is a lot of these dogs are newer and they're not as accustomed to ratting you know, Tough, Onsa's brother, as well as obviously Boss, they're still new to the ratting game, and so there's a lot of dead time during ratting that you guys don't see because I edit it out of the videos. There's time when we're standing around for 15, 20 minutes with nothing happening, and a young dog or an inexperienced dog can easily get distracted and want to wander off. So have, having them on the leash makes it easier for us to keep them focused in the right areas. Uh, another question I've been getting, what do I do with the baby rats? So... Anytime we get little baby rats, whenever possible, I try and save them alive and then bring them back and give them to uh, a, a nursing domestic rat to raise them up. I have a friend who breeds rats. I often give them to him. Do the dogs and mink get hurt? And kind of along the same line, do the dogs ever hurt the mink? Nope. Never had a problem with the dog ever hurting a mink. Um, have had a lot of dogs get bit by the mink. I uh, can't think of a time when the dog ever bit the mink. Dogs are very easy to train. Um, if you have a halfway decent dog and you know anything about training, you can get them to respect the mink. It's, it's really not that hard. The thing that is difficult is to get the mink to respect the dog, which they, 
rarely do and often bite the dog depending on the mink. Some are really bad at it, some rarely or almost never do it. But even the best of mink who really like the dog will sometimes have a uh, off moment when they're chasing a rat, get a little too excited and bite the dog. So that happens. Um, as far as the mink and the dogs getting injured by the rats, the dogs are big and tough, thick skin, big bodies. Those little bites they get from the rats, it, they're uncomfortable, but they don't really cause much damage. Um, the dogs do get bit quite a bit. And you'll see that's why I hold my puppies back. I don't let my puppies start ratting when they're too young, when those little bites might make them nervous and, and want to avoid ratting. So we wait till they're mature enough to handle those bites before letting them really get into ratting. Um, the mink, on the other hand, same thing. Uh, you know, a mink's going to get bit from time to time. But unlike the dogs, they're much, 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 much better at avoiding the bites. So they can actually go for hunting for weeks on end, catch rat after rat after rat and not get a single bite, or at least not a noticeable bite that we can see. Um, so they're very good at avoiding it. And when they do get bit, they've got some pretty thick skin as well. Not quite as thick as the dogs, but, but it's pretty tough. So they don't get injured as bad as like when I get bit. Another question that kind of along the same lines people have been asking, how do I catch rats without getting bit? Or do I get bit when I catch rats? Uh, kind of the same question. So yeah, I get bit and when I get bit, I've got thin little human skin. And so when I get bit, I, I bleed quite a bit. I get, um, from muskrats, I've got some pretty mangled fingers actually. Muskrat bites are really bad. Uh, but I don't really get bit very often. I'm really good, kind of like the mink. I'm really good at grabbing them without getting bit. Um, just from lots and lots of practice for years and years and years of grabbing rats and grabbing mink and grabbing muskrats. Uh, I've learned how to do it without getting bit most of the time. And when an accident happens, you know, if it's a little brown rat, it's not that bad, but when it's a muskrat, it, it can be pretty ugly. One question that people have been asking a lot about is rabies. Most, pretty much all medium to small sized rodents are not known to carry rabies. No one has ever gotten rabies from a medium to small sized rodent. Um, and even if they had rabies, they actually lack the saliva glands to transmit the disease in a bite. Most bites you're gonna get from a rat or any other rodent are gonna be dry bites. And so even if they do have rabies, even if they're that one fluke rat that has rabies, they're not, probably not gonna give it to you from biting you. Um, the black plague or bubonic plague is actually carried by the black rat, not the brown rat. Some historians believe, now mind you, there's some who disagree with this, this theory, but some historians actually believe the brown rat is part of what ended the black plague. So the black plague, in Europe happened before the black brown rat was very common. It was the black rat that lived in people's houses and barns and such back then and were getting everyone sick. Well, the brown rat soon after the black plague ended was spread everywhere and they actually, the brown rats are a little bigger, a little more aggressive, so they push out the black rats. And so some historians believe the brown rat, the species I've been hunting, is actually why the black plague ended because they pushed out the black rats. Others historians disagree and have other theories, but anyway, that's one of the theories of what ended the Black Plague. So actually, there's no concern with the Black Plague or rabies when it comes to rats. So there are other diseases that you can get from brown rats. For example, leptospirosis. A lot of people, you know, uh, from Europe and England are, are freaking out about leptospirosis because it's a very, very, very common disease where they live. I heard something like over 50% of brown rats in England carry leptospirosis. So it's a big fear for them in their country. And in certain parts of our country, it is relatively common as well. So here in Utah, we're lucky enough that leptospirosis is pretty much unheard of. Uh, just south of us in Arizona, they have it. Other parts of the country, they have it. But here in Utah, it's pretty much unheard of. Um, having said that, however, I do vaccinate for leptospirosis. So that covers all the questions we're going to answer today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, this might have been kind of boring or it might have been interesting. I'm not sure. So let me know if you enjoyed this little, uh, you know, answer questioning session or if, if you find it kind of boring, let me know as well so that I can adjust my videos accordingly. So now let's give you a quick update on my little Dutch Shepherd Malinois puppy. In these pictures, she's five weeks old. And I'll tell you what. Looking at these pictures drives me nuts because I have no idea which one's her. <laughs> oh, I just can't wait to fly out there and finally test and look at and evaluate all these puppies and finally pick which one's going to be mine and better yet, of course, bring her home. I'll actually be bringing her home on Halloween day. So she'll be able to go trick-or-treating with Olive and I if she's up for it 
and oh, I just can't wait. So, 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 so excited to finally get my little pup. Here in, in Utah, um, it's actually pretty uncommon. <laughs> it's back. It's back, <laughs> know, it's back. It's back to haunt me the fly. Okay. 